Hello Internet, I am the Hero of Julios once again with another One Piece chapter summary. This week's chapter is chapter 1020, Robin vs. Black Maria. And it is a chapter a lot of us have been waiting for. But uh, before we get into that, let's start with the artwork. This one's a pretty funny one. It's a fan request of Denjiro um, dreaming of munching down on a giant shrimp tempura, only to find, you know, in reality, he's actually just munching on his own hair pretty funny um you know just another fan requested artwork still waiting on the next uh cover story but this one's it's, it's a ch chuckle it's worth the wait without further ado let's get into the actual chapter itself it actually starts off um where we left off with yamato and kaido going at it and it is revealed i have it written down uh yamato's devil fruit is the uh it's the dog dog fruit model okuchi no makami it's the, it's like a guardian wolf spirit of Wano. Um, it's a mythological zone, which we all kind of knew that was coming. And it furthers along the theory of Momonosuke representing the uh, fable, The Journey to the West, where the young, you know, future king was um, helped along by a monkey, a dog, and a pheasant. Or is it a, it's a I think it's a pheasant. Or it's a peacock. Regardless, a lot of people believe that this is going to be Monkey D. Luffy. Yamato sort of confirms this by being the dog in the story. And then finally, um, you have Marco kind of representing the pheasant. When in, you know, unless for some reason Aokiji just shows up because he's also known as the blue pheasant. Uh, along with Kizaru being, you know, the yellow monkey. Akainu being the red dog. So those three were also kind of symbolic of that more as just a reference this is more getting closer to actual symbolism this devil fruit's actually pretty tough because um she's able to breathe fire just like kaido can and it seems to be almost on equal terms though kaido seems to be less tired out by this fight it's again i think it's really more of just to stall time till luffy gets back yamato even said so that the the real goal is to just stall till Luffy returns. I like the idea that we're getting closer and closer to a Straw Hat crew versus Kaido. That's still what I'm hoping for. I, you know, we can't predict anything going on, but so far, so good. The main bulk of this chapter is dedicated to, as the title suggests, Robin and Black Maria's fight. Starting off with Robin being surrounded by her mother, Saul and Professor Clover, as they're sort of beckoning her towards them. Uh, the, all the while, Brooke is yelling at Robin, you know, don't listen to it, don't believe it, this is just, it's a trick, it's a trap, and as Robin gets close enough to the illusion, she just goes, yeah, yeah, I know, and she, this, you know, gets ready, and just giant hands slap into Black Maria's minions, um, two of which are just, you know, normal smile users, but one of them is actually one of the numbers. I believe uh, it's uh, Kunyan? Kunyan? Uh, based on the number Q. I think, I think Q is how it's pronounced, but the number nine. Uh, this brings us to the sixth member of the numbers. And like we saw with all the other ones that have been taken down, the numbers are big, the numbers are scary, but they don't seem to be one-on-one -on -one fight material. They just seem to be like uh, when you're in a tower defense game and you've got like tons of little minions marching in and then the gifters are like the slightly bigger minions and then you just have like that one huge minion coming through that's really more of just a, a big sack of HP than actually a threat. So that seems to be how the numbers equate here because they they get smacked around pretty badly. They're cool and it's actually kind of cool to see that one of the numbers is a girl because, you know, all of them seem to be, like, male, monstrous kind of things. Both Hacha and Kunyan are both very humanoid-looking, and the others are kind of monstrous. So it's like a... it's... at first, you know, there was a theory that, like, maybe number one was going to look like a complete monster, while number ten was going to look like a normal person. That seemed to have been thrown out the window, because number ten on this group seems to be, you know, just as weird-looking as number four. So the numbers... Maybe they're like just a 
a failed experiment of gigantification because that seems to be a big theme is every group is trying to get their own version of giants but it, all in all it seems the numbers aren't that great of a threat they're not that really competent they're just heavy drinkers heavy hitters and a lot of hp cutting away from this illusion though we find that both brooke and robin are sort of unaffected by it robin has already accepted the loss of her family, her, you know, her island, everything she's known. And Brooke lives with the loss of his crew every day. I mean, he spent 50 years hoping it was just a bad dream. So they were almost the perfect opponents for Black Maria. It was almost unfair. Like, no other member of the crew, kind of like when Usopp fought Perona, it was just like, Surprise, I am your kryptonite, Luffy versus Eneru all over again. It's it's really nice when it works out like that. Sometimes the DM throws you a monster that he knows you can handle be just because it would be more fun to see you handle them than it would be to see that monster's abilities. Also, Black Maria can make illusions, so I these ancient zones are almost like mythical zone level. Like last chapter, we had this helicopter neck piece on the Triceratops. The giant ancient spider is making illusions. Can Ulti just like shoot a rocket out of her forehead? Like what are, what are the limits to what is the difference between a mythical zone and an ancient zone? Because so far, they seem to have special abilities. And it seems a little... Not inconsistent, because it's one piece, any devil fruit can do anything, but it's just, I thought they were just super durable. Turns out they can, they're transformers with, like, illusion powers now. So, interesting, to say the least. Regardless, Black Maria does con continue her pursuit of Robin and Brooke, and granted, you know, this is a manga for, you know, young men, and this is a manga for young ages, so we weren't going to have, like, naked Black Maria fight. But I really want to know, what what was the point of Oda turning her around with, you know, the big tattoo on her back, only to have her put on, like, a bandage? Like, did, did Robin and Brooke sort of just, like, sit there and give her a moment? Did she, like, do it for dramatic effect and then just immediately put it back on? Regardless, we get introduced to Black Maria's weapon. Uh, as we saw, it was a... Uh, this um, mythical wheel-looking monster with flames coming off him. Uh, turns out, uh, yes, it is an actual person's face on the wheel, but the spinning actually comes from his body. You see, his name is uh, Juan Yudo. Yes, Juan Yudo is his name. And he ate a pug smile. So <laughs> his entire body is this tiny little pug, and his face takes up the wheel, and then he just, like, walks along it like a hamster to get it to spin. Not exactly sure where the fire comes from, but as she starts burning the place up, Robin's like, whoa, hang on, if you, if you burn this place down, you're gonna, you know, hurt, you know, all of your allies and stuff. And that's when Black Maria starts taunting them. She, you know, they had already been making fun of Sanji, but at this point she's like, oh, you seem so concerned about us, but you don't, you know, you don't seem concerned about your crew. Look at your weak little friend Sanji, who he cried out to you. And, you know, the whole Onigashima heard him say that. And he just begged for help. He's the laughing stock, And he's the second highest bounty on your crew. What does that tell you about the rest of you guys? This is, you're, you're weak. You're, you're, this is sad. And Robin responds with, in my opinion, one of my, one of my favorite moments of Robin. One of my favorite personality traits of Robin is how much she loves that her crew loves her. She even tells Black Maria that, I feel sorry for you, you know? She, she pities that Black Maria doesn't have crewmates that would call out to her for help. And as Robin prepares to fight Black Maria, Brooke says, would you, would you like to take this by yourself? I'll just take out the minions. And Robin looks back at him and goes, yes, Brooke, and I'm, I'm very happy you're, you're, you know, letting me do that. So it's, they... They square off. Brooke's going to take out minions. Brooke's going to take a nice easy fight this time because, let's face the facts, Brooke was MVP last arc and he needs a break. Robin hasn't seen a lot of action, so she gets this nice one-on-one -on -one fight. 
as she prepares a giant version of herself. And we just, we're going to get that giant woman versus giant woman fight. It's going to be cool. It's always cool to see giants fight. I'm hoping, you know, when we get to the Elbaf arc, it's just giants left and right. So that's going to be fun to watch. The, the little kid in me is like, you know, giants, they're cool. I'm looking forward to doing a Storm King's Thunder for D&D &D with my group that I uh, DM for at my local game shop. So that's what we're segueing into next there. I like giants. Giant women are cool. Um, giant men are cool. Giant warriors are cool. And... Okay, I know. I'll, I've, I've been putting it off long enough. But um, I need to take a moment for my obligatory... This chapter had a lot of Robin in it, and we need to appreciate that moment. So, uh, bear with me. But anyways, this is not actually where the chapter ends. Uh, we get two pages of Luffy, who, with the Heart Pirates, has finally caught off to Momonosuke, and the group is all together, and Momonosuke is just crying over Luffy. He's like, Luffy... You know, Kinemon's gone, Kiku got taken out, I just sat there and watched, I'm too weak to help, and Luffy looks at him and just goes, Momo, Momo, shut up. Shut up, I'm tired. And, you know, Sh Shinobu's like, don't don't talk to the Shogun like that, but he's like, no, nah, no, nah, shut up. And, Momo, you need to do me a favor. We need to fly. You, we need to go up there. Personally, I thought Luffy was going to use Gear 4th, but... He may still be out of it. He may just be too tired. He may be conserving his energy. This is also a great opportunity for Momonosuke to maybe learn to control his devil fruit. Um, maybe that's what Luffy's goal is all along. You know, if he gets a dragon, then it's like, Haha, Kaido, I also have a dragon. And it'll be Luffy, Yamato, Momonosuke, and maybe Marco against Kaido. And after that, you know, Journey to the West, all that jazz. But... The the last thing I want to focus on is Caribou. I know, that's a weird thing to focus on after such a lovely chapter, but Oda doesn't usually just, like, cut to a character and then have no reason for that. Is Caribou going to fight someone? Is Caribou going to do something? Is Caribou going to do something wrong? Regardless of the reason, we see Caribou, like, peeking in on this conversation going on, and he's thinking to himself... Uh, if these guys don't win, I can't get off this island. So I guess he's going to do something to... Oh, wait, what if he, with Momonosuke's fire, because he's a, a Logia type, maybe he could make like a hot air balloon and like help them get up there? That's possible. Regardless, that's where the chapter ends off, with Luffy looking to the sky, preparing Momonosuke, Robin preparing to fight Black Maria. So we're going to get one more chapter of that. Um, maybe next week, maybe the week after, but, and we also get, um, Caribou looking in on them, thinking of how he's gonna escape this island. With that, the chapter ends, and we just have to wait and see what happens next week. Thank you for watching as always, and I will see you in the next episode. This is the Hero of Julios, Xing out.